Thank you, Father, and thank you, everybody, for, of course, being here. I just have three brief stories to share with you tonight. Uh, again, my name is Greg Aitchison, and I am actually blessed to actually teach 7th and 8th grade religion uh, just over there at Our Lady of Grace. Um, so it's good to be home here uh, in a way as well. My first story, though, goes back uh, to my first days of college. Like many of you probably experienced, my mom and dad drove me up to college. I went to Iowa State my freshman year. And they dropped me off, they unloaded me, they unpacked me, and then bye-bye. And me trying to be the 18-year-old man that I wasn't yet was just sad. <laughs> very, very sad, trying not to admit it. Um, so my parents left. I didn't have any really close friends who joined me at Iowa State, so all of a sudden I was, I was kind of alone. And I was homesick for a good part of my, my freshman year at college. Not like in a way, way I need to call mommy, but just in a there's something broken in me and I'm sad. So I had that going for me right away. And on top of that, for some reason, I thought it would be a great idea to join a fraternity. I thought in my head, I think, a fraternity would involve living with 60 guys in a big awesome house. We would eat pizza a lot and we'd play football and watch sports all the time. That was my, my hope and my ideal. Uh, it turns out frat life isn't always like that. Uh, sometimes yes, but most of the time no. And I quickly realized that the life that most of my frat brothers desired to live was a life of eat, drink, and be merry. Party, 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 girls, 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 skip class most of the time and don't really care about much else. And I knew deep down that that would not make me happy. Um, my parents raised me well enough to realize that, Greg, that's not going to fulfill you in the end. Uh, so thankfully, I, I listened to them and uh, I knew that I couldn't just fake it and try to be happy like that. Uh, so I found myself, again, homesick and kind of saddened by this shallow, shallow lifestyle of most of the guys around me, trying to find some peace and some comfort in my heart. And so I found myself returning to the same place on campus quite a bit, uh, the place I didn't really expect to find myself, but I just, I just did. Uh, and it was the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church right on campus was a place that I all of a sudden found people who would talk about more than just beer and girls, uh, who actually had more of a, a meaning to life, um, people who were pointing me not only to the home there, but to the home of heaven, um, and then also, of course, just to have silence, to have prayer, to have a chance to sit in front of the Lord and just soak up, soak up that, <laughs> that God that I needed, that God that I was looking for right here. So uh, my freshman year, I found my home away from home, uh, and it was at the Catholic Church right on campus. My second story is the next year. The next year I, I transferred to the University of St. Thomas, and I transferred so I could study theology. I wanted to study theology because I had questions galore. Questions just came from everywhere. Once you go, go on your own, all of a sudden you question everything. And I really questioned everything. I questioned everything that was kind of those big earth-shattering foundational ones. Why am I Catholic? Uh, does God exist? If God exists, is Jesus really God with skin on? Um, if Jesus is actually God with skin on, um, why are all of his followers not like him? <laughs> uh, all kinds of questions like this that I, I, had, I had to answer. I had to find answers for. And um, I knew deep in my heart that I didn't want to be Catholic because mom and dad were Catholic. I knew deep in my heart I didn't want to be Catholic because my friends were Catholic. I didn't want to be Catholic because I went to a Catholic grade school and a Catholic high school or because it was just a nice little thing to do. I wanted to be Catholic if I was going to ever be Catholic because it was true and because it was actually the best answers to all these questions I had. Uh, and so I asked these questions and I asked them to the point where I actually left the Catholic Church. I left for about a year. I traveled to different church to different church every weekend. One weekend would be a Lutheran church. The next weekend would be a Baptist church. The next weekend, a non-denominational church. The next weekend, I just wouldn't even go to church. And I kind of say, can I even be Christian? I don't know. Um, and I did one dangerous thing in college. And that was oh, maybe a lot of dangerous things like climbing trees and so forth. But I did one extra dangerous thing in college, and I didn't own a TV. Uh, and not owning a TV created a lot of awkward silence the good kind of awkward silence that makes you look at your soul and not avoid the big questions in life. So I faced the questions. And some days I didn't want to at all, and it broke my heart to, to have to just sit there and not know where I stood. 
Uh, and so I asked all these questions. I remember going home for Thanksgiving break and Christmas break, and I'd go to Mass with my parents because out of respect, I'd still join them on Sundays, but I wouldn't go up to communion. And so my mom and my dad would go up to communion, they'd come back to their pews, uh, and they'd be right next to me. I remember my mom, almost every single time, she'd kneel next to me, and she would just cry her eyes out. And I knew her tears were tears of prayers for me. I knew every single one of them was for me. And I had to look at my mom and say, I'm sorry, Mama, but I can't be Catholic just because you're Catholic. I can't be Catholic just because you believe it's true. I've got to figure this out. So I went back and I asked more questions and more questions and more questions. And thankfully, eventually, I started to find answers. Lots of them. Lots of really, really good, deep, awesome, wonderful, incredibly intelligent answers. Father Keating actually provided a lot of them uh, at talks on campus. I wrote down tons and tons of notes as he spoke uh, on campus a lot. But um, much to my chagrin, a lot of these answers were very, very, very Catholic. And I wasn't really excited about that because I thought, <laughs> I thought I was this clever and courageous young 20-year-old kid who's like, I don't need this, I grew up with this, but I can go do my own thing. And so I backed myself out of the Catholic Church and then very unintentionally, I backed myself right back into it. Praise be to God. Kind of the icing on the Catholic cake that year uh, was a good friend of mine invited me to go to Rome for a, a spring break pilgrimage. Whereas other friends were traveling to Florida and Cancun to kind of do the party scene, we went to Rome. Uh, and I'm so glad that this person invited me along and we invited some friends along too because we went there. And you can't help but see the beauty and the depth and the history and the glory of the Catholic faith that we all have. Because uh, it's everywhere you look. Whether it's going to Mass with John Paul II, or whether it is traveling the streets of Assisi where St. Francis walked 800 years ago, whether it's going to the catacombs where the martyrs were buried, you name it, everything's Catholic and everything's just amazing. It makes you so proud to be Catholic. So even though I was an ocean away from home that time, I still felt like I was at home. Rome's sweet home, as they say. My third story. Uh, was around this time as well. I met a beautiful young lady named Kate, and of course I fell head over heels in love with her. She was 10 times smarter than me. She was beautiful, absolutely beautiful inside and out. She just naturally made me want to be a better man. Uh, she encouraged me to be a saint in just the littlest ways that she could, and I knew pretty quickly, I was like, all right God, this is going pretty well so far. Let's, we can get married. This is going to be awesome. You're writing a good love story here. And as soon as I started to tell God that, God gave me the old nudge and said, Hey, you thought about the priesthood? <laughs> and I said, Be quiet. <laughs> we got a love story. This love story is happening and it's amazing and we'd be great parents and so on and so on. And God, being the gentleman that he is, kept on nudging me and saying, What about the priesthood? Have you thought about being a priest? And I kept on, of course, ignoring, ignoring him and ignoring him until eventually I couldn't ignore him anymore. If I was going to be true to my faith, if I was going to be true to Kate, I knew what I had to do. Uh, so walking through the snowy woods a January, a couple, I don't know, eight or so years ago, um, I stopped, Kate stopped, and she looked at me, and she said, what's going on? Tears start to fall out of my eyes, and I say, Kate, I love you. And because I love you, I have to go to seminary. <laughs> and her response really surprised me because she said, Greg, I love you too. And I understand. And I want you to go. Because I want a guy who's going to love God more than he loves me. And I said, you're not supposed to say this. <laughs> you're supposed to say, no, this is a stupid idea. Don't go. What about this love story? What about our future? And all this kind of stuff. But Kate trusted God more than I did at that moment. And she said, no, you have to do this as horrible as this is for both of us. Go do this. Because God's plan is the best plan. He wants the best for us and so on. So thank goodness she was more faithful than I was. And she, in a sense, encouraged me to go. Uh, the last day that I had with Kate, we did something that we had done many times before. Uh, Mary, St. Mary, had been close in our relationship, so we decided to pray a rosary. We met at Como Park and underneath a big old fat oak tree, we sat together and we prayed a rosary. We kind of offered all of our prayers, all of our hopes, and all of our frustration and all our struggle through this. We said, hey Mary, you've been good to us. Please take these prayers and give them to your son. And we 
bawled her way through the rosary. Uh, Kate remembers, of course, after that, driving home and crying her eyes out most of the way. I remember going back to my dorm room and just being broken inside and thinking I had just made the worst mistake of my life. Uh, I went out to seminary, though, and just about as soon as I got really, really excited to be a priest and thinking this would be amazing to have so many children to give my entire life for the Lord, God said, hey, Greg, good job. You passed the test. You gave me everything. You let go of everything for me. You wrote me a blank check with your life. Good job for giving me everything. Let me give everything right back to you. And I like to say that God kicked me out of seminary. Uh, (laughs) In a good way, of course. And I know deep down, of course, as a priest, if God was calling me to the priesthood, I would be as happy as can be as a priest, and I would do my best there. But God called me to be a Catholic husband, and now a Catholic daddy as well. Uh, Kind of the fun, extra-providential moment after Kate and I got married in 2008 uh, is we had a daughter. We we didn't really know what we were going to have, boy or girl, but we had a daughter in 2010, and we were very excited, of course. And one of the reasons we were excited for our daughter is because we wanted to name her after the three very important women in our lives. My mom, who's Sharon, a very holy woman, again, who cried her eyes out for me because she wanted me to come back to the Catholic faith. Her mom, whose name was Mary, who had been praying for her to find a good man, which, of course, is me. Uh, <laughs> and a third very important lady, your mom as well, and my mom, St. Mary. Uh, so we, we wanted to name her Mary Sharon Aitchison. And in a fun, providential way, God gave us a nice little gift. Uh, Kate was a week late in giving birth, and she's really short, and she's little, and so she was about out to here, so nobody could believe that she was actually a week late. And she gave birth on March 25th, which is the Feast of the Annunciation. Uh, that feast where Mary says, your will be done, God. That feast that Father Keenan said, just change the world, because she said yes. So God kind of gave us that little extra gift. And now I know Kate and I and our little girl Mary, and we've got a little one on the way, we're all so happy to be Catholic. So happy to be a part of this family, a part of the family that stretches all the way to Rome and back, uh, all the way to heaven and back, you name it. Uh, We're just all proud to be part of this family, your family, and proud to be Catholic and home. Thank you.